Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Quinn Twett Dow, and I'm speaking with... Sam Edwards. And we're currently in New York for DroidCon New York, and we're bo- where we're both speaking. And I'm really lucky to be able to talk to Sam today. Sam, uh, where are you based, hey. and how did you get started in Android? Hey there. Uh, I'm from Richmond, Virginia, and I got started in Android because my wife got an Android, uh, the first Droid when it came out for Verizon. And uh, she had it for about a week. I stole it the entire time. I made her get the blue case instead of the purple case so I could use it and not be embarrassed. <laughs> and finally, at the end of the week, she said, you need to go get one. So I was a big Android enthusiast since day one, and I had a Java background in programming. So I did that and web development. And because I had the Java background and because I had the UI XML experience from the web, it just kind of was a perfect blend. Natasha Murasev is one of my good friends that's on the iOS side of the world. Mm-hmm. And I talked with her and I was like, I'm doing a lot of these web contracts, but you don't really stand out. They're like, oh, do you know .NET? Do you know PHP? It's like, there's no good way to stand out, but I loved Android. So when, I, when we moved to Richmond, Virginia, like two years ago, uh, I went ahead and interviewed, interviewed at Capital One and I was like, I would like to do Android. And they were like, well, how well do you know it? And I was able to fake through and get through everything because I'd done like four or five projects. But it's like, I really want to do it in a focus sense. And um, one of my favorite quotes is Jesse Wilson um, Mm -hmm. asking like, oh, are you an Android developer? He's like, "Uh, I'm a server developer that's like faking it. So (laughs) that's kind of how I am. But like, it's been two years strong. I'm loving it. I've been like really diving into this great community that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, I I personally feel like you're really legit now. Um, And uh, actually, Sam and I were both very recently at DevSTC where I got to see, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, first time wearing it. That's awesome. I love yeah. that shirt uh, done by the fantastic Virginia Poltrek, who does a lot of really oh, nice. cool watch faces. Um, but yeah, so I actually really loved your talk, and like we love testing like in the community and mm-hmm. on our channel. And you were actually also talking about a testing subject, but you're talking about something very particular. Yeah. What was your talk on? So my talk was ended up being the result of what we've ended up doing on our project. Um, I am in Richmond, Virginia, and our team started there, but our main team is now based on Washington, D.C. So I'm kind of like this off in my own little world, but I'm actually sitting with the QA team. And because of that, like I got to sit with them and they're doing their Appium t- tests and they have in- <laughs> inherited this from old teams and the regression took about three and a half hours. And I was looking at it and I was like, this espresso thing seems pretty cool. Yeah. Seen some videos by Chuki and some other stuff. And I was like, let's go try it out. So I did a few proof of concepts, worked out okay, but it was really hard to sell it, sell them on it. On, on espresso in particular or? Just converting, right? Because if, if you're on a certain piece of software and you're comfortable with it, you kind of stay there. Right, yeah. So the way I've described it to somebody is like, we had to make a really big jump. Like before we were testing everything from another t- sort of tooling and, and looking into Android, but mm-hmm. really wanted to be in Android kind of looking out. So with this whole process, um, I, I started getting into Espresso more and more and really wanted to do this, but I ran across the talk that Jake Wharton did about testing robots. Mm-hmm. And that was like really big into like test architecture and maintainability. Mm-hmm. So he did it on Kotlin and because our team is in Java and I haven't done Kotlin yet, sorry, I'm not super cool. Uh, <laughs> I went ahead and set up our stuff in Java and a talk tomorrow is actually gonna use Java. Um, but yeah, we went ahead and set up our testing framework to use Java and the robot pattern and added in screenshots. And what I was able to do is with this robot pattern that we have and all the screenshots there, um, we write mock data tests um, from the developer side, so more like unit tests, but mm-hmm. using the UI. And then these robots that are created, our QA team can just use those. So like they have this really simple to use syntax where they just need to say, log in as this user, and they can do all of their actions. Mm-hmm. And so even though they weren't like really Java friendly, and didn't know how to use it. Well, not friendly. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they hadn't used Java before. Like, mm-hmm. it's been a really smooth transition. And Android Studio is such great tooling that like, it's picked off really well. Cool. So you were able to really like automate things and just kind of make it a much more smooth integration process to using kind of like more like Espresso tools or. Yeah. So just before like kind of nobody knew about it on that side. Like we actually have two teams at Capital One. So let me be clear about that, right? So we have our main enterprise app, and that has a lot of Espresso going on in it. Mm-hmm. But they're using the uh, test-driven development side of like using Cucumber, and I really oh, wanted to go from the developer side of like um, just writing tests as a developer would. So we've kind of are doing that. So it's not that Capital One hasn't done Espresso, but our team on Wallet had started. Nice. And um, actually, a lot of what I thought was really cool about your talk was that you talked about doing screenshots for testing. Yes. And then like using different libraries like Spoon. Um, you also mentioned, what were the, like, there was like two more that you mentioned. Sure. So um, Spoon does screenshots. There's also Falcon. Uh, and there's also UI Automator. So in my talk, I go into like trying out each one of these, doing some performance testing, the overhead, and then the, like what you get and what you don't get with each one and trying to like give you the options of like what you want and what you'll get out of it. But mm-hmm. Really, the screenshots was a thing that I hadn't heard before being done. Like, well, I've heard it being done. You just go ahead and say, you know, type in this piece of text, check this thing, take a screenshot. Mm -hmm. But that's like this unmaintainable test Mm -hmm. where Jake had this really awesome pattern of like, let's do these robots. And I figured like, 
wait, we're already doing these things inside the robot. Why don't I take a screenshot during each one of these? And then it just puts together like this beautiful story of what's being tested. I Yeah, that's really cool. I like yeah. that, presenting it as a story. Because and you had this really great quote in your talk where you talked about, um, was it like, because a lot of times testing just looks like console output? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. To, so to, <laughs> to the people that, you know, make kind of decisions. Yeah, so I had like three points, and I know at least two of them here. So number one is nobody can see what you're testing, right? So first of all, when you run your espresso test, you see it flashing on the screen, and then it's done. And that's great. But... Um, the next thing I said, number two, was like nobody cares that you write tests. Mm -hmm. And to your product manager, anybody else on the team, it's really just console output. It's whatever kind of spit out there and they're like, that's cool, you did tests. And I mean, obviously there's really good technical product owners and people out there. And ours is, uh, our technical product owner, Jeff, is really supportive of this. But mm -hmm. in general, I've found that to be common of most uh, product owners. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, with this, you can actually really see what's being tested. Uh, anybody in the team can use it. This has been really helpful in a material redesign that we're currently going through. Yeah. So um, we have our old app um, that all, basically all the screens are changing. So we had started on the old app, but we're mm -hmm. migrating all the tests over. Mm -hmm. And with this now, we can run it on a very multiple combinations of device sizes and types and mm -hmm. OS versions and like really see what the app's looking like and see if there's any problems with the design. That's really interesting because, you know, I mean, like, I feel like testing, um, especially like visual testing, we, I think, I think that there's still like, I, I know like I'm kind of behind in my visual testing as well. And it feels like screenshot just seems like a very natural way. Yeah. Again, like you said, when you're going through like, you know, testing, you're telling a story, you're telling some like a, the story of a user who used this feature in yes. your app. And I can actually take pictures of that and kind of see like any problems you have from a visual standpoint rather than just like a functional standpoint. So yeah. it's really interesting. So yeah, one of the things I recommend in the talk too is even if you don't really want to do screenshots for each one of these, mm -hmm. set up an espresso failure handler so it takes a screenshot at the point of failure mm -hmm. because just having that context of instead of just the console output, like this is what the screen looked like when it failed, mm -hmm. is so important. That's amazing, yeah. Because mm -hmm. you can really kind of pinpoint problems rather than like looking at console output, it's like, where is this going? What's going on with this? So No, absolutely. Like, yeah, I know Chiki wrote that entire tool of like how to parse the espresso uh, output of the view hierarchy so you can try to like visualize it in a better manner because mm -hmm. it gets to be hundreds and hundreds of lines. It's very difficult to debug. Awesome. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so but so you're giving that talk um, this this yep. week at DroidCon New York, and in I believe two days. in two days, and it will also be recorded and available. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, thank you so much, Sam. I'm really actually really su super interested because I know like um, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've tried to like kind of do like look at some screenshot with testing, but yeah. um, I think when I watched your talk, it was actually kind of crystallized, and it seemed like, okay, why am I not doing this? It makes a lot of sense, especially with things like you said, like if you're doing a material redesign or just, yeah. you know, but it seems to go hand in hand, like yeah. with, with the UI testing for sure. Thank you very um, much. Well, you're, thank you. And yeah. um, if people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? So I'm a handstand Sam. Um, it's a little weird, but uh, I actually have handstands in 46 states and like nine countries. Really? Uh, so if you go to handstandsam.com, that's my like development blog, but handstandsam.onamap.net. Mm -hmm. It's just like hacked together AngularJS site I have, but it has like a map and you can view a timeline of all the different handstands I've done. So I've done it like on Yosemite and Half Dome and like oh, in Paris sweet. and all over the place. So like, oh, okay. So that's where your screen name came from. Yeah, that's where cool. it comes from. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sam. Oh, thank you, Wayne. And uh, thank you all. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.